In the previous video, you saw how we can make U boxes. We made this one, and um, I also showed how, uh, with an example from the real life, uh, with uh, cutouts for electronics, LEDs, plugs, etc., we have these two panels, single pieces of metal bent at two locations. They fit together and they form a six side rectangular box like this. Um, there's also quite some options for making U boxes. You can have regiers, you can have them extend in certain ways, etc. And that's the advanced one we'll get onto in, in the next video. We'll, we'll look at how this one was made and all the advanced manual features of the script. But in this video, we'll see how we can make a rack unit. Okay, so how do we normally make rack units using Sheffer services? Previously in this series of videos, we have seen, just a sec, a example of making a rack unit using side profiles or side sections. You can also use housing profiles to get any height of the rack unit as you want. But in this case, we'll make a rack unit based on two sheets of metal only. So here it is. We have one piece of metal, another one. We have bent cavities here and bent cavities here in each of them. And now I'm going to fold them to mount housing brackets here and here, along with all the other holes, and then put this together into a rack unit. You can see there are also some cutouts here. These are all examples um, for placing electronic modules from the Skarhoi um, series of uh, electronics. Um, so uh, we could finally populate this and uh, make it into a real um, device. Uh, but this is just for the demonstration for now. Okay, so what you have seen me do on this video so far uh, is that I bent the two panels and I mounted the housing brackets. Um, actually, I forgot about these three housing brackets before I started, so I had to mount them after the fact. And as you can see, I was kind of, yeah, I don't know if I would say this is being in trouble, but I had to bend the back side of the panel back again uh, while I had bent it all the way up. I had to bend it back in order to, to actually get to the nuts and get those mounted. Another thing is that when I uh, bent the front part of the panel, I instead of, um, well, the, the way I did it was I took, I took the front and I bent it up like this, but because there are cutouts and everything else, the, the panel uh, bent a little bit and I, I don't think I damaged it, but I'm, um, it just reminded me that when you're bending panels, it might be, in this case, better to think first and then do as I finally did, where um, I, I held onto the bottom of the panel here because that is more steady, and then I bend it up like this uh, so I didn't in introduce a lot of stress on these uh, tiny walls that we have around. So now I'll just put it together finally and then see if everything fits. And there you go. So comparable to the other one, same sizes, different price tag. This includes five sheets of metal side sections. This includes two sheets, but some relatively long cavities for bending. So how do we make such a rack unit? Actually, it is as easy as it was to create the little small box from the previous video. You launch the U script, uh, U housing script, 
uh, inside the front panel designer. And then you select, I want a one, one unit uh, rag unit. In this case, we selected black. You can choose to add guide engravings if you like, and I suggest you do because now again we have regias here, so it's nice to see where you can actually place all these modules. And then uh, create an order with housing brackets is probably a good idea too, because um, there are a lot of these in this case. And uh, if you look at the uh, order form, you see that this time we are ordering 25 housing brackets. There's a package of 25 brackets instead of uh, the usual eight brackets in a single bag. So, uh, and that's of course cheaper than buying eight uh, or four bags of eight. Um, if we go to uh, front panel designer, you see um, the panels look like this. Of course, there are no cutouts like I put on this panel as an example, but you see uh, all the same features you see how useful it can be to have the uh, guide engravings so you can see where you can or cannot place uh, cutouts and uh, related to the rag ears, etc. Um, so it will tell you all these things. Yeah, and the same for the, the bottom here. Actually, um, there was one feature on this one where you can see, you can see it if, you, if you look here under the bottom, um, I had to place uh, housing brackets with the, um, or uh, I, I used housing brackets on the front using studs and I had to move that a little bit because I wanted to fit in this module here. And there you see, I, I have moved this, um, this bracket here. So, so, so here again, you need to, uh, take notice of the engravings on the panels and um, in order to move that particular one um, if you look at it again from the front let's load up the the top here and then when we look at it from the front we see okay this is the bolt that I want to move so let's say that we found out that I needed to move it um, 10 or 20 millimeters to to the right. So I move it now over to the right by 20 millimeters. And you can see now it has moved here on, um, yeah, okay. Let's just see. Okay, so I, yeah, I moved it over. And um, in order to identify that particular bracket on the bottom side, um, you really need to take notice of the guide engravings because they will tell you that this is the front side, this is the bottom area the bottom area and the front side leading up to the front and and that will help you because now you know that it has to be this this mounting hole sitting right here that needs to be moved down in this case because down when this is the bottom and the front bottom and the front then down would be to the right if you looked at it from, from the front so uh, here we then say okay go minus 20 like that, and then it's moving down. Okay, so that's basically what it is, um, or what was involved in uh, creating this rack unit using um, the U housing script as an alternative to using housing profiles.